Online Services, the Marley and Who1.co.uk present the 20 Megabyte Doctor Who Podcast. Hello and welcome to the 20 Megabyte Doctor Who Podcast, episode 579. I'm Adam and Happy New Year! It's the first show of 2024, and here's Mary Lang. Everyone should have a hobby. Mine's annoying you. <laughs> <laughs> Which Kirby should take to heart. <laughs> yes. Where's my bell gone? Oh, yes. Uh, uh, Kirby Bartlett Sloan. Your breath stinks like a serpent. Has anyone ever told you that? Uh, speak for yourself. <laughs> yeah. Yes, um... We're back uh, after a little bit of a crimbo break uh, for various reasons, uh, uh, mainly spending time with family. Lillian Robin is uh, uh, on the live link and says, what is going on? Yal having problems. Well, obviously. <laughs> Did you send out the message that we were starting at 7.15, Kirby? <laughs> no. No, you didn't. So there you go, uh, 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 Lillian. It's our... Uh, yeah, well, that, it, well, I had... I, I don't know why I should bother doing this explanation, but the original idea was to start at seven. And then it turns out Isabella was called into work and wasn't going to finish work until seven. So my job as a parent was to pick her up from work. However, she ended up finishing, finishing at six. But I thought I'm not going to keep on changing the time backwards and forwards. So I kept it at 7.15. So during that the, that time, I did actually give you a fairly good amount of notice. You would have still been in bed when I sent that message out about the 7.15 start, Kirby. Wait, where did you send a message about 7.15? Well, we have this group chat thing, don't we, called uh, 20 megabytes. Yes. Yeah. I saw it. Thank you, Mary. I saw it. No, Mary, you get one of these. That's why that's why I was surprised when you started uh, oh, no, a little early. No, I started the Skype call early because Kirby was sitting there mm. whinging about the fact that he was sitting by. But anyway, uh, this oh, week... Oh, I, I see it now, oh, 2.05 in the morning, but sorry, I did... It's not good I enough. guess it scrolled off because of Debbie. It's not... I didn't see anything from Debbie, actually, to be fair. It's not good well, enough, there, by the way. There's something from Debbie, Debbie. sitting right there. There you go. Not, it's not, still yeah. not good enough. Um, we're going to do two things today. We're going to talk about the church on Ruby Road and then do the uh, bog standard review of a Robot of Sherwood. Now, um, I, I have I watched um, Church on Ruby Road on Christmas Day, which of course was fab being able, being able to watch a brand new Doctor Who on Christmas Day, just like the old days. Um, so uh, I, I can't, I'm going to try and remember it as best I can just by flicking through it. Um, yeah, so this, I think the episode started with a sort of mysterious baby dumping uh, outside a church now this reminded me of an episode of a series that i watch quite regularly called lost long lost family um foundling specials they do these occasionally on on, on long lost family and uh, you americans won't probably be aware that the british version of long lost family is hosted by nikki campbell and davina mccall so it was a well, bit i'd of never a, heard of before this uh, uh, Started. I've managed to skip all the way through the episode. I blame you for that. Um, <laughs> so the fact that um, it, it links in with that series, which is an ITV series, Long Lost Family. They didn't mention the title of the show in, in this episode of Doctor Who, but the fact that Davina McCall is there as the interviewer, etc., etc., is very closely associated with uh, Long Lost Family foundling specials. Of course, this child, Ruby was a foundling and of course there's a mysterious woman that walks away from from this uh, dumping of child and of course i think uh, that there's going to be some significance later on uh, and also that uh, when we move into the title sequence of course the doctor rocks up and sort of looks a bit worried and uh, well, has a, adam, has a adam, tear running down his face mary adam adam excuse my interruption but are you actually going to do a full run no I'm not, that, no 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 i'm just saying episode? this is quite important the, the first bits of the story i'm just uh, recapping um oh, okay, okay. So I'm tr I'm trying to get the episode. You up don't have on to. I'm telling screen. you. You don't have to. I'm telling you. I love the church. It's very um, anyway. But the to baby's remind myself. Yeah, the baby's found, and the doctor sort of rocks up, tear down eye, and then uh, the title sequence. The, the TARDIS is is flying through all the all the words and stuff because it's the first title sequence of a shooty um, Doctor Who episode, and crashes into all the words as it's going through. I think. 
I think the shooter is doctor needs to learn how to fly the TARDIS properly, crashing into words and everything. Okay, so yeah, so um, Ruby's uh, a foundling uh, and she's she lives in a in a in a sort of foster place, uh, but she stayed. Uh, all the other foster kids were sort of. Yeah, yeah, she, back she was family. actually adopted by the That's family. That's what I mean by stayed. Anyway. So uh, uh, we see uh, uh, she's out on a night out and, and, and uh, the doctor's having a bit of a dance. And I'll tell you what, uh, <laughs> Shooty Gatwa can basically wear anything and look amazingly cool. Uh, so <laughs> I, I'm thinking that the chances of him having a set costume are quite slim. Because I just want to see him wearing something different in every story. Every time, like, yes. He looks so good. <laughs> well, the way it looks, wears. he is going to be wearing practically something different every time. Oh, good. I mean, because he, he encompasses the Doctor in, in, in his his bodily, um, uh, not fluids, no, bodily sort of performance. <laughs> and uh, so <laughs> I just love he's so cool. Um, and Ruby, uh, she um, she's on a night out and uh, the, the Doctor's sort of um, watching her. Um, because the, the, um, it's it, the, the stay fast, uh, um, marshmallow man nearly falls on him, doesn't it? I think, oh no, it's an inflatable snowman, sorry. Um, certainly, uh, so, and of course, we also see that the master, doctor's new science master, master, what they added that scene, the snowman scene at, uh, at the last minute, uh, to because why, why was it, uh, Mary? Do you remember? Mary's falling the, asleep. Okay. <laughs> yeah, they they had added that scene at the last minute. Mm. Uh, I think to give a little uh, background. Okay, but so. um, of course we also meet the Doctor's new sonic screwdriver, which some people are moaning about. Uh, we also meet um, the the neighbour. I can't remember her name, played by um, Brian Mrs. Mason. Flood. What, Mrs. Flood? Yes. Mrs. Flood. Yes. Yes. Um, and her personality changes from the she she doesn't like the the TARDIS there in that first scene and yet and then she's looking directly into the camera in the last no, scene. Oh, it's very mysterious, isn't it? But I'll tell you what I'm really pleased about. Anita Dobson obviously played Angie Stenders and then retired from acting for many, Not many obvious years. to me. Retired. It is if you're British and watch East End or used to watch it like I do. Anyway. This episode is full of ex uh, so- soap people. Yes, thank you. <laughs> yeah. I was trying to say that Anita Dobson, who obviously played this iconic Ange in East Enders when it started out, is an exceptionally good actress. Hasn't been doing it for years because she's been wifing uh, for uh, Sir Brian May and now is back acting again and she's still got screen presence and it's supposed to be about 30 years later she's incredible um but she did give me sort of missy vibes um but anyway moving on yeah. uh, no i don't think that she's no, i'm not mad. saying she is i'm saying she's giving me missy uh, vibes i'm not saying she obviously is obviously oh she's God. she's the ronnie <laughs> <laughs> ronnie what, which ronnie ronnie barker or ronnie corbett or or ronnie, ronnie, ronnie from t- sarah jane adventures <laughs> i knew you'd say that next <laughs> Uh, anyway, so um, there's this sort of stuff. There's, her, there's some scenes that involve um, Ruby's sort of day to day life, uh, and then she goes and has an interview with uh, Davina McCall, who's now got a leg in a cast, and then the Christmas tree is just about to fall on her because it's one of those Christmas trees from one of the. Uh, remember that Tenant Christmas special? We had the, the spinning Christmas tree. Yeah, you don't mm-hmm. do. It's probably that one. And eventually they start running uh, across the roofs, and uh, there's this sort of spaceship flying up high, and the Doctor sort of uh, it's a, a, officially it's a sailing ship. Yeah, officially introduces himself uh, to Ruby, and they uh, board the ship, uh, which is a ship. Uh, and they they, has... they crawl through unnecessary uh, oh, God. ventilation shafts because there's so many holes in that ship. Oh, you don't need ventilation God. shafts. So bloody what? Anyway, on board the <laughs> ship are gremlins. I mean goblins. Um, and uh, there's just, I'm just going to paraphrase this. Cause just, Where, where's uh, David Bowie? What? The Goblin King. Okay. Well, Goblin King for me looked like um, Jabba the Hutt, Jabba. to be fair. Yes. And everybody in the family Jabba. said that. Um, anyway, but it eats babies. It's a baby eating Bishop of Bath and Wells. No, it's not. It's, the, it's a baby eating. Um, um, uh, King Goblin, but I tell you what, the, I just love the the whole sequence on the, the ship and the song and 
um, the joy of it all. I tell you what, the only thing I didn't like about the, the, the Goblin King was the fact it did really look like a puppet. Uh, um, but I suppose it's nice to actually not use CGI for every single thing that's got a, a Disney budget. Um, so I, I, I thought that was okay. Um, and the, I thought yeah, it so was brilliant the, that, they, that it was it was, a, phys, it was a puppet and yeah. uh, controlled by five people. Yeah, it was cool. Uh, so meanwhile, they um, obviously have the after having the fun and the song and dance on the ship, which was absolutely fab. Uh, they're back to the house, and um, and then to cut a long story short, because I need to get on with uh, the robot showbread. Um, something the house starts cracking, and and something happens with time, and and she suddenly disappears, and the do- the doctor has to go back and find her again because everybody's forgotten her all the people in the house the aunties one of the other they all get really moody and are not very nice the aunties and Wait, stuff. wasn't it brilliant how how uh her the actress who plays her mother changed yeah her acting was brilliant there yeah. oh absolutely Where, same with the one in the in the bed uh they just suddenly changed yeah. and the atmosphere changed i suppose they did that with a little bit of lighting and and, and the, the type of lenses they used for the, 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 the cinematically yeah, all the all the lights, all the yeah. uh, the fairy lights are not on the wall no. in the hallway. So the doctor. I like the, those. <laughs> doctor goes back and sort of, I think he basically re, reinserts Ruby as a baby because I think that's what's happened to it. The, the, it goes back in time that the um these this sort of uh, goblin muck king wants to uh, does actually eat ruby initially but the doctor goes back and undoes that uh and uh the the, the um sorry if anybody's not watched this episode but tough because <laughs> it should have done so by now um the 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 uh, goblin king gets done in by the spire of the church uh, which was uh, quite a cool way to die i suppose and um yeah that, that's basically the end of the story although we have that little sort of uh who is you know this mrs flood woman and there's a sort of uh, will she go off and have a, you know, fly around with the doctor and, ta- and welcome to the tardis da, 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 da. but yeah so um christmas specials uh, are usually a bit of a damp squib and i know i said that uh from the previews that we saw of this i wasn't expecting it to be particularly good but actually it was particularly good uh and great fun um it felt really festive because obviously watching it on christmas day and it wasn't uh, christmas wasn't bashed you weren't bashed over the head with christmas basically it was just there was a few hints of christmas here and there but there was more more to do with the story and this amazing beauty of it and um the, the performances the direction and the cinematography um uh what else can i say about it really the, the singing Oh, it was, it was a, a delightful move forward uh, for Doctor Who in its new sort of um, guise, I suppose you call it. Uh, and I love Shooter Gatwa. Uh, what did you think about it then, uh, Kirby? Uh, well, I'm going to put a little bit, uh, I'm going to be a little merry on this. Merry? Uh, <laughs> yes. Because well, it was Christmas. I, You're going to be merry Christmas. I didn't particularly like the uh, goblins. Right. Uh, I mean, the the song was fun. They yeah. they were fun looking. Uh, they made no sense. We shouldn't have fantasy elements without what? some what? scientific explanation, other than uh, other than timey. I forget what the explanation was, but it was not satisfying to me. Mm-hmm. Uh, Shooty is fantastic. Yes. He is going to be one of the best doctors ever. I steady can already on. tell There's that. There's only a, uh, two the, and a bit episode, one and a bit episodes with him in. So steady on. The, 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 the companion, uh, she's she's great. Uh, I like the, the little mystery of Mrs. Flood. Uh, I was just a little put off by the, or a lot put off by the goblins, because go, those goblins do not belong in Doctor Who. Oh, God. Okay. Is that it? But I didn't. I didn't dislike it. Oh well, that's good then. Um, <laughs> oh, right. so we get two of these today. Is Mary? What did you think of the Crimbo special? Well, he said he was. He was doing a, a little bit of Mary, but uh, here's here's a lot of Mary. <laughs> <laughs> I hated the goblins. I oh, hated dear. the song. Oh dear. Um, I agree with Kirby totally. Goblins don't belong in Doctor Who. Yeah. I mean. 
it's kind of turning into more of a, a sa- fantasy than than sci-fi show. Um, I, I I echo his love of of Judy, and I, I and I like the companion. You know, we haven't really seen or heard enough of her yet for me to you know like really decide. Um, but you know, she was inoffensive in this. Um, and generally, it was an okay story. It wasn't great, um, but it was a Christmas episode, so I'm, you know, forgiving it a lot, except for the goblins and that horrible <laughs> song. Um, so, but I'm anxious to see what happens because um, I think that the future with uh, Shooty is, is very promising. Um, so, yeah, uh, I, I'm more up. I, I, I didn't not like the episode very much, but I still feel upbeat about what's what may be coming. Well, that's not a bad uh, um, statement, Mary. Good. On the live feed, we've got Neil James says, Happy New Year, you sexy lot. Um, that might be Neil James, uh, me, because that might be his special nickname for me, <laughs> sexy lot. Uh, and then, hey, Lillian. Yes, I, I have God, to say you look it's sexy. Just, we're, it, we're, he's well, using exactly. our, our platform just to flirt with Lillian. Lillian <laughs> Robin says, Hi, Neil. Terry James says, they were doing the giraffe, uh, Ian Kirk. Disney war- one read the doctor to <laughs> a yeah, pair, wow. a, a that, pair more <laughs> allure, so snowman. Ian, what are you drinking? <laughs> Lillian Robbins says... We had a little too much eggnog this... Uh... <laughs> yeah. um, Lillian Robbins says, of course we watched the Christmas episode. Terry Miles says no babies were eaten during the Christmas special, but they they could have. But actually, no. Um, Ruby was eaten and then uneaten because the doctor changed uh, history. Uh, and then Lillian Robin says Ruby was eaten. I just said that. <laughs> anyway, right. Uh, so um, from uh, from that uh, we move on. Uh, we can, if anyone's mentioned anything on the, on on the Twenty Megabyte Doctor Who podcast Facebook group which you can join. Uh, I'm sure Kirby will tell us about it later, because I want to move on to Robot of Sherwood, which uh, begins... Yeah, I don't think anyone said anything on about the episode, the Christmas episode. Let me take a quick don't look. Don't worry about that. We're, going, we're on Robot of Sherwood at the moment. Okay, fine. Robots of Sherwood. Robot. Originally. No, it says robot on this title of Sherwood. And I said, know, but it was uh, the the okay. working title is robots. I don't care. Um, anyway, um, yeah, Clara wants to go and meet uh, Robin Hood, and the Doctor says Robin Hood's not a real person. It's a, you would know. Though. I that's one thing I have a little bit of a qualm about with this story that uh, it turns out Robin Hood was real, uh, and the Doctor would know that because he knows all space and time. Anyway, moving on. Uh, so they, um, the Tardis uh, eventually, obviously, because she's giving. Um, Clara what she wants, a trip to rather sceptical, the Doctor is, actually, as they arrive <laughs> in Sherwood Forest, uh, uh, and um, a um, arrow hits the, and lands in the TARDIS, uh, and of course, just happens to be that uh, the um, Robin Hood that appeared in the Shrek movies um, is there. It's not, though, he just reminded me of that when I watched it. Um, and then we have this scene in which Sceptical Doctor um, has a sort of rather amusing um, sort of conversation with uh, Robin Hood uh, uh, and sort of uh, tries to sort of show off the TARDIS to him. Uh, and then Jenna Coleman comes out. Sorry, uh, Clara comes out in, a, in a, this medieval woman's beautiful red oh she looks hot my goodness she rocks that outfit that costume sorry <laughs> she really does um and then of course uh, uh robin hood's jaw hits the floor as she comes out the the um the tardis and, and then her sort of jaw hits the floor when she sees robin hood and uh it's just a very funny scene and the yeah, doctor she, she seems more drawn to robin hood than to uh to danny pink yeah, at the moment. Um, and um, basically, there, there's a delightful little bantery fight scene with the, um, Robin Hood and his sword and the Doctor and a spoon, uh, which I really quite enjoyed. I really, love that. It was really sort of reminiscent of the Seventh Doctor's um, sort of obsession, obsession with spoons and stuff. Um, yeah, so that was a lovely little fight. So I'm not going to park on about it. And then, oh, then and, you get and, a, the, the com- master, 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 no, master. No, it's not master. in this story. Uh, the... Uh... <laughs> The doctor references where he learned to fence uh, in exactly the same way as uh, he did, I believe, with the sixth doctor, possibly. 
Well, no. Well, I, I had the note up, but I, I unfortunately I had to reboot, so I lost my note. Oh dear, what a shame. Anyway, right. So, uh, and then they go from this very, very amusing, delightful scene to a complete um sort of opposite where this bloke gets brutally murdered in this in this village which of course is basically what robin Hood's story is all about this sort of pillaging and and uh sort of uh, corrupt uh thing that uh, the um, sheriff of notting was doing to strip people of their what tiny amount of money they actually have um of course robin hood played by uh, ben miller who's absolutely delightful and um so it's sort of played in a slightly sort of almost like pantomime sort of villainy way. But the, the scene in which obviously the, the bloke gets <laughs> brutally murdered and he's left lying dead on the floor. It's quite sort of it's a stark contrast to the the sort of um, essence of the episode, which is light hearted. Yeah. Anyway, so um, I, I, I found it. I found. Oh, darn. Why? Why oh, did my God, screen just suddenly move? I don't know. Uh Okay. Yes. The uh, Sixth Doctor boasts of having learned sword fighting from Richard the Lionheart, Cyrano de Bergerac, and the, in this story, he adds Errol Flynn to the list. Oh, splendid. Anyway, um, but oh, all the way through this thing, the Doctor's completely sceptical that uh, this, this is real, so he's testing all these DNAs and blood and hair and stuff while um, um, Clara's being introduced to the Merry Men, um, which is all very, very good. Uh, <laughs> So oh, meanwhile. it's it's hilarious, and I love that uh, one of the characters is played by uh, the husband of uh, Mark Gatiss. Oh, I didn't know that. And, which one's played? Yeah, uh, which one's the, the, the one who uh, the doctor says uh, has only six months to live. Oh. So Mark Gatiss gave his own husband six months to live. <laughs> <laughs> which one only had six months to live? I don't, I don't remember, remember that. that. Yeah, I don't remember that one. But uh, yes, OK. Thanks, Kirby. I'll find uh, it. So, uh, yeah, the dots are sort of very, uh, he's totally, um, by about uh, 13 minutes in, he's totally sort of unconvinced by the reality of the whole situation. But, Doctor, this is a science fiction fantasy TV show. Uh, but there you go. Um, Anyway, they come to this tournament, this sort of archery tournament, which um, in which obviously what's going to happen is the uh, sheriff for Nottingham was going to hit the bullseye, then somebody's going to come along and split his arrow, and then this go happens over and over again. The doctor tries to be all flash by bouncing arrows off things, and um, anyway, somebody gets this golden arrow, and it sort of ends up on the ground. Uh, uh, an arm gets chopped off a guard, and obviously it's a robot. But then the doctor's really interested when that happens. Uh, oh, this is really exciting! A, a robot, great! Um, and um, the robots look they, cool, didn't they? They look. They sort of. Um, there's lots of seize him, which I do love in Doctor Who. I mean, uh, yeah, the, the, char- you, yes? the character was was Alan Alan Adele uh, is played by the uh, husband of. Of Mark Gatiss. Oh, and and, yeah. and uh, the doctor pull, does the uh, hypodermic gizmo and says, oh, all those diseases, if you were real, you'd be dead in six months. Oh, OK. That's why I missed it. Okay. Uh, I remember that line, to be fair. Uh, the robots are beautiful, by the way. They're probably um, facially um, some of the best uh, robots uh, there's been in Doctor Who since the um, robots of death. But uh, yeah. Yeah, um, I agree. And yes. um, I did Master, like that. Master, yes, Master. Yes, yes. Did you know that that Friar Tuck, uh, the actor of Friar Tuck, was in a Six Doctor story? No, I didn't know. No, was he, he, he was in Revelation of the Daleks. He was uh, part of the. Since that was a, I think that was a Robert Holmes. Yes, it was Robert Holmes. Uh, it, part of a double act with Colin Spall. I was offered Colin Spall today uh, for the event, but the trouble is um, even um, the friends of Fraser have said that he probably wouldn't get his guarantee. So I get him put in these awkward situations. Uh, I'd like to meet Colin, Colin Spall, but don't... If oh, I was he's fascinating. A, if I was running a Doctor Who convention, I'd probably say, yay, but it's not a Doctor Who convention. It's just a convention Aww. with Doctor Who in it. Anyway, back to Doctor Who. Uh, so, yeah, they've all been um, 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 sort of seized... So the, the three of them are sat down in the, in a in a dungeon with a beautiful. Um, I love that whole scene in the dungeon. <laughs> it's 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 fantastic, and the, and the, I like that little the little cross 
where the, the the sun the light coming through and creating these little beams of light and then um yeah. oh we that take the you know, the the person in charge and leader and they take uh, clara while uh, the doctor <laughs> yes. and Robin hood bicker um i thought that was going to happen to be fair but it didn't make it any any of the less funny and the doctor and robin hood are going guards 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 of course there aren't any guards which is i love again because they're going guards uh, or reminds oh, yeah, me of yeah. um the black adder <laughs> scene when the black adder's in prison and black adder too and they're going gods and sort of stuff like that but um yeah yeah i love that banter between the doctor and alan yeah i'd love that yeah because of course they're all they're sort of like um freedom fighters aren't they for Mm -hmm. but but Mm -hmm. in a different way um yeah, it's really fab. Uh, so eventually, uh, Clara gets sort of taken out because she's in charge. And um, I'm sorry. Oh yeah, so the arrow has gone back to the the the, uh, the place where the merry men are sort of sitting, and they say, "Well, this golden arrow could sort of feed a whole family for a year," sort of thing. Which is nice to sort of remind everybody what their their aim is to sort of you know to feed the poor. Um, I tell you, my my. My beef about the episode now, uh, because you just mentioned it, or go wait until then, my turn. Go on then. Uh, gold is heavy. Yes, it is. They yeah. wouldn't be passing that arrow around like like it's the weight of a regular <laughs> arrow. Like a, like it's a light piece of wood. Well, they might <laughs> yeah, be, they might be quite strong, Mary. Maybe it just feels like. <laughs> Anyway, it's science fiction fantasy TV show. Um, so, um, yeah, the Sheriff of Nottingham uh, has got the Doctor's sonic screwdriver, uh, which is still, at this stage, the um, 11th Doctor's sonic screwdriver. Did you notice that, Kirby? Yes. Hello? That one, yes. Yeah, He's got the 11th Doctor's sonic screwdriver with him and Clara, so he's sort of um, he's just interrogating Clara while the Doctor and Robin try and get themselves out of the situation uh, by um, sort of coercing the the ugly guard to uh, I, I like how uh, the sheriff refers to the sonic as a wand or magic wand I know that because <laughs> it is Mark Gatiss <laughs> anyway so eventually they get the, the thick O guard in and Robin headbutts him and knocks him out cold and then they carry the, the, the stuff they're tied to out of the dungeon while uh, well, you know, the Sheriff of Nottingham flirts big time with, who wouldn't, with Clara. Um, so, uh, I'm just skipping forward a little bit. Uh, oh. After this, after this Darby, then Lincoln, and after Lincoln. <laughs> so, and eventually the, the, the Doctor finds himself into what looks like the bridge of the spaceship that she, he was always suspicious might be involved in it and of course robin hood is oh my god and the doctor at this stage are, still... are, are there vampires uh the, the three who rule shut up the doctor still <laughs> thinks that um robin hood is not real uh so he's sort of playing it because of course there's um on the computer there's pictures of robin hood i think one of them is but patrick Troughton, i think uh, yes uh, patrick uh, Troughton was the first first person to ever play robin hood on television so that was quite a nice little touch um and he, he's totally confused. The doctor more or less tells him, you're, you know, you're not real. Here's the true proof. Here's the, the uh, you know, the legend of, of Robin Hood. And he's really sort of proud of himself for, for, for sort of enlightening uh, Robin about this. Uh, and then uh, Sheriff of Nottingham and Clara come in with some robots who tried blasting things with their rather cool sort of in, in between the eyes zapper. Um, and Robin actually rescues Clara by grabbing her and diving out of the window backwards into the moat, just as well that the, the moat was deep enough that, for them not to get squished um, you and, know, by hitting the... And somehow that thing on her forehead still doesn't come off. Oh, be quiet. <laughs> <laughs> the magic of, of uh, Doctor Who, yes. So the Doctor... It's, it has to have been uh, super glue. Yeah, the Doctor uh, ends up back in the dungeon with, uh, I think, Maid Marian, um, uh, but uh, somehow manages to get himself out. I can't remember how. Yeah. Um, I'll just move forward a little bit, because I know that, uh, I think I might have drifted at this point, because the football was on. Um, yeah, that, so that they're going to make that, because Robin, uh, sorry, Sheriff Nottingham is an alien, I believe, is that right? Not no, he's a robot. robot. Oh, he is a robot. We don't get to see as a robot. Anyway, so... Um, they cut it out because of an uh, unfortunate incident that happened in the news the week before uh, it broadcast. Oh, okay. 
And there's a little bit of a fight between Robin and uh, the uh, sheriff. Well, they should be, because it's a Robin Hood story. You can't not have this this sort of um, sword fight. And um, anyway, so they try... That, that, um, he gets his arm hurt, doesn't he, old Robin? His little bruised arm. But um, the sheriff goes off in the, in the slightly poor CGI'd spaceship. Wouldn't get away with that these days, would they? Um, but it can't go very far. Because it's, it's, it needs a bit of gold. So um, eventually, obviously, Clara and uh, the injured Robin fire this arrow, which hits the spaceship. Uh, it was able to fly. And there was a massive explosion. And they're all dead. Um, and they're getting uh, better. So and then they all have their goodbyes. And it turns out Robin is real. And um, uh, the Doctor has a little present for him. There's a little maid, a maid Marion, as the TARDIS dematerializes. It's the, the daughter of the poor fellow who is brutally murdered. Yeah, that's right. Um, so there you go. And, of course, he also has a little, um, you know, there's a picture of Marion that doesn't look anything like her, just as the TARDIS dematerializes. Yeah. And there she is. <laughs> I, thought I, it was, I thought it was Clara, in, actually, in the, in the thing. Uh, and then we have a little preview of uh, <clears throat> next the next episode, which uh, excited me because I seem to remember liking that one. Anyway, so uh, yeah, so uh, the robot of Sherwood was good fun. <laughs> um, actually, I, I'm not, I don't generally sort of majorly enjoy Mark Gatiss stories, so this is one yeah. of his better. I actually yeah, yeah. I really, this was a better one for him. I really quite enjoyed this one. We've had a couple of sort of fairly serious episodes in relation to the uh, Twelfth Doctor's character. And this is nice to have something a bit more light for, for Peter Capaldi to uh, chew uh, in this episode. And um, it was it was really good fun. Um, uh, that's, that's all I can say, really. What do you think of rather than Kirby? Uh, I loved it. I loved it even better than I did ten years ago. Uh, I was... I remember having having some dislikes, and I listened to to our comments about it yesterday, uh, our comments from 2014, and I, I did have some problems, but I listened to what I said 10 years ago, and I disagree with myself. I really enjoyed this. Uh, <laughs> I'd like to hear that conversation of you disagreeing <laughs> with yourself. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just, it, it, it's great fun. Uh the I like how it shows how Gatiss compares uh, the Doctor to the, another legendary character because they're both legends. Yes, yes, uh, that's what I liked about it. And it, my only qualm is gold is heavy. <laughs> oh God's sake! Okay, so right. that's it. Okay, so I better play the the music. <laughs> Well, I don't remember what I thought of it when I saw it the first time, um, but I really I'll enjoyed it this time. What, what did you, you liked it last time, too. Okay, yeah. It, it just was a bit of fun. It was written for laughs, and uh, and they were good ones. Um, and it had the exciting part, you know, the robots, you know, killing the people. But but I enjoyed the, the, the big dishes, you know, glancing the, the shots off and killing yeah. the robots yeah. instead. Yeah. You know, cause even even Capaldi's doctor was light, lightweight in this one, yes. having fun. And you could tell they were all having fun. Um, and I really enjoyed you know, any time he and the Robin character would get in a banter of any sorts. It always was was so much fun. Um, so, yeah, I like that. Uh, Gatiss outdid himself on this one. I, I, I really <laughs> did like it. Yeah. And, yeah, you know, I mean, there's things I could pick on. Um, but, you know, for the most part, I stayed with it and, and enjoyed it all the way through. Um, and, and the running joke of, you know, oh, the laughing people, you know, don't don't lock me up with a laughing person. And all that. <laughs> but it, it, it's just so much a part of Capaldi's doctor character, you know, that yeah. he's so serious. Uh that uh, yeah, I liked it. I don't really have much to negative to say. Wow, hang on, this has oh, got to be a sweat of start the year. You know, unlike you, I am not looking forward to the next one. I remember yeah. hating well, the next remember. one. Now you've so. made me doubt myself. But anyway, so we'll see. I don't remember what I thought of it. I think I liked it, but we'll find out. We'll find out. Yeah. Exactly. We'll have to watch it, won't we? Okay. 
OK, then, Kirby, you, um, I guess somewhere along the line you've posted a, um, a request. Yes, back. and I, I apologize for missing the announcement of going late. Not good enough. <clears throat> uh, OK, Neil James said, missed you guys. I'm skipping uh, Captain Kirk's. Uh, Neil James says, Robot of Sherwood. This one gets off to a great start. I really enjoyed the arrival in Sherwood Forest and the sword spoon fight. Meeting Robin's gang is fun, and the archery contest is a wonderful sequence. But then Uh-oh. I get a little bored. Uh-oh. I do like the robot design, and Ben Miller does a good job as the sheriff, but the sci-fi aspect kind of ruins it. I think maybe I'd have preferred a straight historical. Overall, it's enjoyable, but nothing too special. Three stars out of five. Uh, Mr. M Me. Has, has chimed in, and I'm going to have to read what he wrote. Oh, well, so, uh, literally, or... um. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Ha-ha! I missed the last few weeks, so need to catch up. The giggle was amazing. NPH was great. Not too T.O. Sure about the by regen but loved everything else. Nine out of ten. The church on Ruby Road was good fun. I liked the goblins and the, the Goblin King. Mm-hmm. He's not a myth. He's an actual thing. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a shame they didn't get to do much. Nutchit, N-U-C-I-T, mm. shooty, is oh, right. great. And, <laughs> <laughs> and Millie Gibson is hot. Well, Seven not quite as hot as Jenna Hart Coleman, but yeah. Uh, into the Dalek is a bit of a hot mess, I'm afraid. Uh, lots of good stuff, but it doesn't hold together too well for me. Good acting throughout, 7 out of 10. Robin, I mean Robot of Sherwood by Mark <laughs> M-A-R-Q Gats <laughs> G-A-T-T-S-S right. There are some people who don't like Funny Doctor Who. There are some people who don't like when the when Doctor Who is a silly romp. There are some people who don't like their admittedly very Margata's type of humor that permeates this story. Well, those people are wrong. Yeah, and he's correct. <laughs> there are some people who don't like three people shooting a perfectly sized golden arrow into a space space castle floating away into the sky in order to blow it up. Those people are right, at least. <laughs> okay. This story is good fun and a nice bounding on the Robin Hood mythos mixed with myriad who moments. Jenna Coleman is hot. Yes. So it's a shame she only wears this dress for one episode. Yes. Oh, and the fact that the sheriff's beheading was duly excised shortly before broadcast does somewhat damage the end of the story. Yeah. But it was the right decision to be made at the time. Ultimately, the story ends with a moral reflection of both Robin and the Doctor, which makes the whole thing worthwhile. I think I will give this 8 out of 10 on a good day. Next time, somebody's been sleeping under my bed. Uh, And... Ian yeah. Kirk says, has the live stream started? I don't see it. Restart <laughs> uh, my PC twice and refresh the page a few times. And he says, I see it now. <laughs> Is that it? Is that That's it? it. Okay, then we better, because um, I know people have been missing the um, load of words thrown into the hat, and they will throw <laughs> out of the hat and see if they fall together in a, in a coherent way. Here we go. It's Andy Nunny. <clears throat> well, give me 20 minutes, it's Andy Lee here. It's nope, uh, just after 6 o'clock on Sunday night, so going to go to the back of the sports pages. Um, yesterday, I did the ironing, and uh, the first thing I watched was a cracking match where the Tigers beat the Saracens. I wonder what Kirby's view on that game was, but it really was a very good game. And then I watched Robot of Sherwood. Now, it's, yeah, it's... <sighs> It's all right, I suppose, isn't it? Really, not the, not the best of stories, you know. It's, uh, I guess, like a lot of older fans, people thought, oh, Time Warrior, because there's so much bother Time Warrior, you know. Alien spaceship comes down, convinces the local ruler that uh, they're on his side, they can do him good, they're trying to get away, they're going to escape, he explodes when they go. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's pretty, pretty, was pretty lazy writing, really, wasn't it? And there's just so much in the story that just, really didn't hang together. I mean, it did borrow a lot from mythology of Robin Hood. You know, the the, uh, the shooting contest, uh, Maid Marian, you know, things like that really were, you know, obviously straight from uh, the mythology that is Robin Hood. Um, I mean, there probably was a person or perhaps a series of people who uh, who started mythology off. Um, so, yeah, there was, there was some reality in where it came from. But, uh, yeah, it was... 
I found it lazy, you know, it didn't really give me anything more. Um, there were some good bits in it, but I like the bit at the beginning where the arrow gets fired in the TARDIS and the Doctor pulls the arrow out and fingers the hole, if you pardon the expression, that could have been a slightly <laughs> better phrase, couldn't it? And um, the hole then disappeared, which uh, I thought was quite, yeah, it's, uh, you know, you show the Doctor looking after the TARDIS. The the battle with the, the sword and the spoon was actually, was quite funny as well, and it's, I suppose in a way it could work, and then the bit where he bumps him off the bridge into, into the water, Obviously, that, that reappeared later and then get put, pushed in himself. Um, but again, yeah, I mean, it's interesting because the Doctor then, a bit later, he's completely dry, he's immaculate, as well as immaculate as he ever can be. So it's a fair as um, Did he not get affected by water? Or, you know, did he go out the tires and change? We, we never actually saw any of that. Um, and then, of course, we go and we meet the, uh, the, you know, the, 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 uh, the Merry Men. And of course, he's marrying at that point in time. He's conspicuous by her absence. Uh, I didn't recognise Trevor Cooper. And of course, Trevor Cooper from Star Cops, if uh, you remember that from uh, when I was a student in those days. By God, it was that long ago. Uh, and we go through a fairly predictable romp. You know, it's the, uh, the, the, the the archery contest was quite good. And then you find out later the Doctor's using some sort of homing device to actually make sure that he splits the arrows. And actually does quick, you know, get quite good. And it gets, it gets a bit comical, you know, when people are looking away, looking to the one side. And, of course, he comes home to Roots where the doctor says, well, I, I cheated. And they are all three of them shooting the arrow down. Um, I think the, the point that, yeah, they're using gold. So obviously, they're rebuilding the uh, the circuitry within the spaceship. I think that actually sort of does stand up. Because obviously, gold is, is very important for circuitry. And obviously, the most purist and the best conductor. Uh, the bit where the, the golden arrow is fired up and hit the spaceship and somehow then gets turned into fuel, it's like... Yeah, how? I know it's a, a science fiction it's fantasy a TV, fantasy show, TV or show, something of that ilk. I'm sure Kevin okay, <laughs> probably right on that one. But it just, it was just, it was just too easy. Again, it was just, it just sloppy writing. You know, let's get an easy way out of this. Um, the uh, coming up, they're, they're all robots. I mean, you know, Robin is too, you know, too good to be true. It's a bit like the Jack the Ripper one told us when you see uh, the um, the fallen ladies who are looking immaculate and lovely white teeth and everything. You know, in, in those days. Nobody looked like that, so I think that's why the doctor knew that, that there was something wrong. The bit where he's going on testing the uh, the um, the merry men, it's a bit of a throwback to the wheel in space, isn't it? The doctor then was testing people and trying to find out, you know, what could be real. It's again, it's I think perhaps somebody thrown in the past, oh, I'll just reuse that again. Lazy writing at the end of it, you know, it's fairly predictable what's going to happen, they're going to go off, the space is going to blow up, and yeah, I mean, it's a uh, the one good bit was the, the last line where Doctor, I don't want to be a hero, you, know, you can't be, but then Robin said, I'm not the exact line, but it was a case, it was, yes, but you can make other people be heroes. I think that, in a way, is what the Doctor, the Doctor inspired other people. And perhaps that's what the legend of Robin Hood did. It inspired people. And finally, um, when the Sheriff and Robin were fighting up on the rafter, call it what you wanted, he gets bumped off and drops into the vat. Anyone else think? Frying tonight. Be seeing you. No, I was thinking of um, when the Joker fell in the uh, the vat in the, in the, the <coughs> first Batman film. Uh, thank you. I, that, I did so... not realize. I did not realize that uh, uh, Trevor Cooper was in Star Cops. He's the one who was in Revelation of the Daleks. Okay. Uh, Mary, I sent you over some blurb. Yes, you did from the Mileses. Okay, and they say first off. Happy New Year, everybody. Happy New Year. <laughs> that said, let's go back to September 2014 and talk about Robot of Sherwood, written by Mark Gatiss. So it's going to be a historical tale. What's to say about this one? A fun romp is an apt description. In the TARDIS, the doctor wields a spoon that might come in handy later. In quotes, I don't need a sword because I am the doctor and this is my spoon. The Doctor and a very hot-looking Clara meet a storybook character. Sounds very land of fiction to me. In the Robin Hood story, it's Little John that Robin fights on the bridge. It must have been hot there as their clothing dries out very quickly. <laughs> yeah, what's that too? Hang, hang on the title of the sto- hang on the title of the story says Robot Singular, and there are quite a few of them about. Oh, well, it's the writer of the Sherlock TV series, so expect a lot of mystery. They are making gold circuit boards to power their spacecraft. 
hmm, this is set in the 13th century, and they are using the same technology as the first century pyrovores who lived in Mount Vesuvius. Nothing like recycling technology. If I recall right, this is the episode that had a beheading removed due to the televised beheading of two Americans by ISIS. Mm. In this one, the doctor asks, when did you start believing in impossible heroes? And Clara says, don't you know? That really, I have to interject, that is a really good scene. Her looking yeah. at him saying that, yeah. Um, Robin says, you're as pale as milk. It's the way with Scots. They're strangers to vegetables. <laughs> we thought it a fanciful romp. At least they didn't start singing like some shows do. Oh, wait, that gets me <laughs> under the <laughs> oh, <no>. <laughs> Just because all the American shows have had musical episodes, Doctor Who is British and does not need to ruin an excellent story with a song and dance act in it. Other than the singing, other than the singing, the church on Ruby Road was a very good story, introducing some teasers for the next new series. Next up for us is Listen, Linda and Terry. Yeah. Yeah, I, yeah, I agree. We sure don't need that, that musical that. number. Um, I don't see why not. Why not? Mm -hmm. a musical number. They, they, they did it in Star Trek. Um, but that's probably why they did it in Doctor Who. But at least it wasn't the whole episode. It was just one musical number, which yeah. I think there was a bit of a musical sequence, wasn't there, in the um, mm -hmm. the regeneration episode of, of, of the one that I can't remember what it was called. Anyway. Uh, but yeah. Still good fun, wasn't it? Uh, right, so uh, we have one more piece, which... Oh, I was going to say something, uh, and now I forgot what it was, in relation to that feedback. So I'm going to have to refer to it, because uh, so I got slightly sidetracked with a comment about the musical stuff. What was it? Yeah, I'm just going to read back there. Because sometimes, you know, you think about it a bit at the beginning, and then... Uh, oh, I'm not going to be able to do it, am I? Because it's too far back. Oh, it's a, yeah, Clara was hot. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Robin is story that one blur. Yeah, this is great podcasting. Uh, hang on, I know I'm not gonna be. I've forgotten it happened twice. And I forgot Sound like me. <laughs> Never mind. Uh, so hang on, where's my page gone? There are certain aspects of that I wanted to make, make a comment on, but I forgot what it was now. Oh. So. <laughs> Hello, 20 Megabyte Podcast. This is Ian Kirk. What? What? Robot what? of Sherwood by Mark Gatiss. Clara gets to meet Robin Hood and fight the sheriff. The Doctor is very reluctant to believe in him, though. The Seventh Doctor used to carry two spoons. Clara is explicitly in charge. It might be that the Doctor's memories of the androids of Tara lead him to believe Robin is a fake. It is very convenient that the spaceship just needs an arrow's worth of gold to reach orbit. This is a lightweight story with a lot of jokes. There is no Missy this week, though the robots want to go to the Promised Land. Oh, yes, of course. The Church on Ruby Road by Russell T. Davies. Davies has his soap opera mode on again with a look at the companion's family. This swerves away from science fiction towards fantasy. Nice to have Janice Goblin named as a tribute to Janice Joplin. Nice to have Davina McCall as herself. In a previous, she was just a voiceover. She becomes the second guest star to be almost killed He's by a Christmas tree. Tea was very important to Arthur Dent in Hitchhiker's Guide, and it is important to Ruby's grandmother. Anita Dobson was in the most watched British drama episode on EastEnders. Who is Mrs. Flood? One theory is that she is an older version of Ruby. She did wow. not disappear when Ruby did, so that is unlikely. Her personality changed from hostile to friendly after Ruby reappeared. Some think she is Ruby's mother, but why would she live next door to Ruby in the time track where Ruby was killed? Why not? Why not? Some guess she is the Rani, but they always guess that and can be ignored. <laughs> <laughs> the way Ruby and the Doctor got loose was a bit ropey. Ooh. The Doctor did not treat the Goblin King with kid gloves. An enjoyable romp to introduce the new Doctor with a catchy song. He is. 
Doctor Who returns in May, probably as a birthday present to Adam. Absolutely. Do we get an explanation I, as I was, to I was, why? I was expecting a bye for now. But no, yeah. We, but yeah, uh, one, and I know what the explanation would be, Mary. Obviously, it's Christmas, and he's been he's been sucking all the helium out of the balloons, and that's. What's <laughs> but whatever he used to do that, it needs to be adjusted so that it doesn't pause for. Oh, I don't know. I think sometimes pausing period. is good. You, you, Did very... you see Ian's comment on the on the postings? He says that was a text to speech program. Yeah. I like Ian's voice better. But it was still yeah. quite good. It was a nice surprise, wasn't it? Um, yeah, <laughs> interesting. A, a sort of like a, a sort of a twist on the show. Well, and his uh, his accent is heavy enough for me that this made it more understandable. <laughs> Mary. <Sorry. laughs> okay, right. That allows us to move on to uh, other stuff. Um, right, so. Well, let's have a look at DoctorWhoNews.net because stuff has any, happened. Any comments on the live feed? Besides uh, what nothing of any interest. So, uh, yeah, Kirby's a load of rubbish. Uh, Adam is superb. Uh, Mary's got the great dulcet tones. There was all sorts of stuff come up here. I'm not saying who say that because I want to obviously inflate anyone's ego or anything. Um, but let's see what we have got. It's uh, okay. You can stroke my ego anytime. <laughs> All right, uh, Lydian Robin says they probably used tit tape to put that on Clara's forehead, uh, and then I went, I want Clara's dress in this. Uh, Tim Drury says. So Adam is looking a bit cold. I'm, all right, thank you. Uh, Adam is looking a bit cold because I'm wearing this full length Udi, which is bloody lovely and warm there's no we haven't got the heating on because it's too expensive these days to to have heating on so what we do is wear these oodies which um you can wear and not even realize the heating's not on uh they're fab uh so yes i'm not actually cold i'm looking cold because i'm wearing an oodie uh or they oh no oodie oodie's the dog oodie's what i'm wearing um and then ian kirk says that was a text to speech program yes mary read that one already i know she did i'm just reading it again Right then, so uh, I was just about to do something, wasn't I? Oh yes, Doctor Who News. Doctor Who News. Right, Let's see if I've got, I've got to scroll back quite a long way here because we haven't been here for a while. Haven't been here since last year, Kirby. I know. So we last recorded. I haven't done that one. Uh, church. Oh, to, to the church on Ruby Road on DVD. I can't believe they're still releasing stuff on DVD, but they are. Um, I should hope so. I want things on uh, DVD. Doctor Who Christmas Special, The Church on Ruby Road, is now available to pre-order on DVD and Blu-ray and as a target novelisation. I suspect you can get that through whoone.co.uk. Have a look. Uh, whoone.co.uk? Um, and it says, but we've already reviewed it, so we don't have to repeat what it says. The Giggle Ratings Update, uh, Doctor Who, The Giggle, had official an official seven-day rating of 6.85 million viewers, according to the research board bar. But I wonder if that includes Disney, Disney Plus viewings. Uh, but, yeah, that's quite a good rating anyway. Um, Church and Ruby Road uh, that just says it's going to be on on Christmas Day. Of course, we knew that because this is now the future. Um, <laughs> it's odds on who ratings competition um, after some six years Doctor Who has returned to Christmas Day, which of course makes it a candidate for being the most watched show of the day. Wow, that was just a little competition they ran. I will find out, won't we? Sad news. Um, the, the actor Richard Franklin, who played the best captain in the history of Doctor Who, Captain Mike Yates, um, and he was in 43 episodes, has died at the age of 87. Now, I'm very lucky to meet Richard um, when he was 81 um, six years ago. Yeah, I saw there. your picture. Yeah, it's a cool picture, isn't it? Um, yes. Yeah, so he was a nice chap, actually. Um, quite, um, what's the word for it? Uh, what is it when you're sort of um, prepared to spend time with people? Well, that. Generous. Generous with his time. So, you know, you can go in, um, have an autograph, have a chat with him. And, yeah, very nice chap. Um, so, there's a nice in-memoriam video that Toby Haydock's done for 
forum if you go to the uh, doctornews.net uh, Toby's particularly good at doing in memoriams to be fair Doctor Who magazine episode 599 featuring Shooty Gatwa and uh, Millie Gibson on the front cover um, and a nice little sort of corner picture of uh, David Tennant that we're shooting um, that's another thing I just remembered afterwards that annoyed me about this bi-generation I didn't mind the bi-generation the fact that um, the, the one doctor comes out of the bi generation with a waistcoat and, and shirt. The other one comes out of the bi generation wearing a slightly dishevelled shirt and a tie hanging over his shoulder. Almost that. that I, I prefer regenerations to be physical rather than clothes. But there you go. They're going to do that now from now on, aren't they? Anyway, uh, Wait, Doctor Who magazine. No, he, he, the, the doctor split his clothes between the two of them. Mm, don't think he did somehow. Yeah, uh, yes. didn't have any. Shooty didn't have any pants. Thank you. Right. Th- that's because uh, Tennant was wearing the pants, and yeah. obviously Tennant would not have been wearing the underwear. Okay. Uh, I'll, I'll let it ride for the moment. Um, yeah, so the Doctor <laughs> Who magazine, 599, um, uh, an exclusive double interview with Shooter Gatwa and David Tennant, blah, blah, blah. Lots of stuff. Go and buy it. So that's available at whoone.co.uk as well. Not to. So I, I just wanted to make sure I went through that Doctor Who news simply because of, obviously, the passing of Richard Franklin. Legend. So it's all looking quite good for Doctor Who. And, of course, Ian mentioned that uh, Doctor Who returns in May. Not too long to wait, really. I'll be bloody old by then. be 58. Um, and, um, yeah, that's good. Uh, so the next thing. I, I was, no, it's going to be very difficult because we normally do, normally do a section on this show where we... Um, talk about what we watched uh i'm going to sort of paraphrase this because i've watched an awful lot of stuff since we last did what we watched and but i can actually contribute uh something this time okay, so fine. don't skip me i'm not skipping anything i'm just want to say the things that speak about we watched are almost for me it's like binge watching but the crown was watched very quickly <laughs> went through uh and i was quite um relieved to find that they they dealt with I mean, they must have edited it but they dealt with the whole thing um very uh, respectfully uh and basically encapsulated the six seasons of the crown uh, as a sort of a tribute to the character of Her majesty queen elizabeth ii and um, i'm lo- i just love the way they ended it i thought it was very moving um they even with princess diana they weren't disrespectful uh, to the way her death was sort of characterised and stuff like that. Because we all know what happened. Uh, she died uh, in a horrible act, car accident. But they didn't have to show, didn't show it in great sort of graphic detail. They they just sort of showed that it did happen, and uh, they didn't paint the the new king in, in a, a, a light he does he doesn't deserve to be painted in a bad light. So they didn't do that, which is good. Uh, although I think the series five there was a bit of that going on. They were trying to paint him in a sort of sort of bad way but they sort of recovered that so all in all uh, The Crown for me now it's done and dusted has been a fantastic series I think they've done a really good job with it uh, especially with the, the time travel aspect of making it feel like it's in the era that it is they've done such a good job with that it's beautiful beautiful series The Crown um, what else have we watched oh Loki finished watching Loki another another fantastic series on Disney Plus um, I watched two Avengers films uh, because obviously I'm building the Lego Avengers Tower at the moment. I just wanted to get a feel for it. Uh, had already seen them before. You're, you're going to put a master, master, master. When you finish the Avengers Tower, on one side you've got no. Put I'm not going to put units on it. I'm not putting unit on it or anything other uh, other than the, the Avengers. I'm not putting unit on it. Aww. You're asking me to put the unit. I'm not. I'm just. It's the Avengers Tower. It's going to have all the Avengers flying around it and stuff like that. It wouldn't quite look right having unit on it with all of it, the Avengers around it. Yes, but it um, if you're um, as a Doctor Who fan that likes Lego or whatnot, if you uh, get the Captain Marvel uh, figure, which is on the front of one of the, the magazines at the moment, it comes with these little orangey sort of fire throwing sort of add-ons, right? I am going to adapt some of these these fire thingies with my uh, one of my doctor who minifigures and turn it into a regeneration figure so cool yeah i know Uh, and when i've done that it won't take too long but when i get around to doing that 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 will be shown somewhere um i'm assuming yeah i'm assuming it's the captain marvel uh the modern captain marvel correct not the the shazam captain no the captain marvel with the uh, on the front of the magazine um um 
I'm also going at some point, I've got so much Lego at the moment, I need to build the official sets. It's going to take me bloody ages. But at some point, I'm going to get uh, some white bricks and bits and bobs to create a version of the classic console room with the round bits on it and everything. Um, so that's something I'm aiming to do in the future. I also want to get a Beatles set. Uh, stuff like that. So there's loads of stuff I want to do with Lego. Now I'm allowed to do with it, thanks to my son-in-law. Ma- master, um, master, master. What? Speaking of the Beatles, did did you watch the uh, the trailer for the next next? Yes, I've season. seen the trailer, which is very exciting for the whole series. Yes. That London Beatles one. Um, so I'm really looking forward to that. Oh uh, yeah, the Beatles one. I'm really looking forward to. Um, what else have I watched? Uh, watched so much stuff. Uh. And now you're probably going to talk about stuff that will remind me of what I've watched. So much stuff we still haven't watched yet, to be fair. Doctor Who, we watched a bit of that. That was quite good. And, oh, God. Oh, Lego Masters. That's the thing I've probably been watching the most. I went through all of Lego Masters USA uh, Series 3 and 4. I found Series 1 and 2 on, on Channel 4, so I'll watch that at some point. But um, because um, being a, an American sort of lego masters uh you can imagine that everybody gets really excited a lot and it's quite um high paced and everybody goes woo and sort of yeah and stuff like that when everybody and lots of round lots of applause and I'm, I'm really excited about and stuff like that um and of course i've got uh, that chappy who plays the lego batman who hosts it and it's pre- it's one of produced by brad pitt but you never see him um so there's there's lots of um, big names behind uh, the us version of um uh, lego masters but and all, but for me what what's worth watching is for um a scottish lady called um amy corbett who's one of the uh, engineers at lego in 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 denmark and she's so beautiful oh my god ja! And she's one of the judges on it. Um, so she's a good reason to watch it. Apart from the skills of all the all the contestants on the programme, it's a very, very entertaining programme. So, but when you can have too much of this sort of high high energy sort of... Amer- Don't take this in the wrong way, Americans. I love Americans. But there is an element to American sort of reality shows where it's very high energy. Everybody's excited. Not Nothing negative apart from when someone gets kicked off the programme. So sometimes you need to bring it down a bit while watching the similar type of thing. So currently I'm watching series two of Australian Lego Masters, which is a very similar format, uh, but a softer comedy um, but you know, it's just a little bit sort of more relaxed. But everybody still gets a bit excited. Um, I'm putting the British one on the back burner for a bit because I've got a funny fine feeling it's not going to match the Americans or the uh, the Australians. But it's just fascinating to see how these people, how clever these people are in building these Lego constructions. Something I'm never going to be able to do. So I'm just looking and watching in, in awe and. Uh, um, so that's the main thing I've been watching over the last month or so really Lego Masters from all around the world some of it is available on YouTube anyway so um, while I try and remember some of the other stuff I've been watching Kirby have you been watching anything interesting yes Uh, I've been waiting for several months uh, for this to come on to uh, what's now called Max what used to be HBO Max or whatever whatever the heck they're calling it these days uh, it's uh, live action versions of Spirited Away. Two different versions, which surprised me. I mean, it's the same set and everything, but two different actresses as Chihiro. And it's really fun to watch. If you like Spirited Away, you like uh, stage plays, st- stage adaptations, it's worth watching. Uh, I've been watching the Percy Jackson uh, in the Olympians uh, TV show which is excellent since they got Percy's correct versus the uh, movie from t- 12 years ago. He was too old in the movie. Um, the other day I um, sat down with Fred and we were going, we we're just looking through DVDs and she picked out the Hitchhiker's Guide movie, which I hadn't seen in ages. So we watched that. And then two days ago with uh, the geek daughter, uh, it up, she suggested that we watch uh, Shang Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings. I like that film. I had ne- I had ignored it when it was out. Why? It was good. I loved it. Come on, Michelle Yao's in it. You can't not watch a film with Michelle Yao yeah, in it. Yeah, I <laughs> I, w- I watched it uh, with her uh, Friday night and then rewatched it with uh, Fred yesterday because it's so great. Uh, somehow I 
thought it was based on some, I thought it was going to be set with uh, Dr. Strange in that lot. Yeah. And it, I don't know why, I guess because uh, Wong was in it for a couple yeah, of minutes. Yeah, he's part of, part of um, Yeah, but, yeah. and I, I'm not all that keen on the Dr. Strange sto- stories. Wasn't Ben but Kingsley this... wonderful in it, though? Yes. Totally yes. departed from anything he's ever played before. He was just great. Uh, and, and, you know, he's uh, he's played that character before. Yeah. Twice. Yes. Iron Man 3. He was in Iron Man 3, and then there was another short film which depicted what he his character said was going on, uh, where he's he was captured and executed. I forget the name of it. Almost executed. Right. Uh but yeah, it, it was wonderful. Michelle Yao's in it though, Kirby. Yes, I, I She's noticed that. A majorly talented lady. The, the, it, it was really good. Anyway, those are the main things I wrote down this time. Okay. Tell you what though, Michelle Yao's in it, and she's really, really good in whatever she does. Yes. She's really talented. Have you watched um, Star Trek uh, Discovery, by the way? No. Did you ever watch that Star Trek Discovery? No. Michelle, no, Michelle no, Yao's no. in that. Just, just thought I'd mention that. Uh, Mary, and, and, you uh, inter- interestingly, oh, nearly, uh, nearly Mary. <laughs> interestingly, they moved one of the Star Trek uh, shows off of um, whichever Paramount uh, over to Netflix, which was odd. Yeah, is that not one of the Picard series? I know that was on both at some point. Uh, the original series is still on Netflix and maybe Voyager. No, not here. Oh, actually, the ask you, before we move on to Mary, I'm going to ask a bit of advice. Do you ever remember an episode of Star Trek The Next Generation uh, in which um, I seem to remember that Picard sort of starts a relationship with an Irish bar lady in the in the um, holodeck? No, no, it's been so long since I saw those. Okay. Well, I was just... I've been... Um, the <coughs> Irish bar lady in that episode... Uh, has been offered to me as a guest for FantasyCon. So I'm just trying to gauge whether that would be uh, beneficial f- or mutually beneficial for for us because um, Jen Linden's coming back this year. That's an that's a exclusive. I haven't heard that one yet. Have you? No. Yes, Jen Linden, Linden has uh, agreed to come back. Very easy for us. She lives on the Isle of Wight. Anyway, uh, Mary, what have you been watching over the last few weeks? Um, you know, the, the funny thing is, is... I have been very uninspired by the majority of things that I've been watching. It's like I tend to get tired and turn away from things, you know. I don't know if you, any of you saw like the Barbie movie, but you know all the raves oh, and like everything. Oh, the Barbie movie. Wonderful. Oh, you know, I, <laughs> I just I couldn't stomach it. Um, along with I don't know, it just seemed like nothing was really grabbing me. So I'm going to jump into things of a little bit in the past anyway, because. Um, I think, uh, Adam, you were the one that commented um, in the new Doctor Who series when uh, Mel shows up, yes. you know, and she's mature and she's a computer whiz and all that. And I, I commented briefly then that, well, no, I mean, the nice thing is that that's been a nice tie in from Big Finish because oh. for the last oh year, there have been several box sets of um, Mel with the Sixth Doctor. Um, as they've gone through um, a purity series, and I, I, I won't get into why the name purity, but um, it, it starts you know, early in the year, even last year, um, a, a new character called Hebe, who came on board in the box set called Water Worlds, and she's a um, she's a she's a, um, a marine biologist, but she's she's disabled. She spends most of her time in a wheelchair. Um, and over the course of the um, subsequent box sets, all of which are Purity, Purity Undreamed, Purity Unleashed, and now I'm starting to listen to Purity Unbound, um, because she's disabled, she's been um, removed from um, from history, as all disabled people have been, by some megalomania person, a Patricia McBride, that uh, that the Sixth Doctor and Mel have been pursuing and trying to um, trying to thwart. So and, and so Mel, for me, has been a mature woman and a uh, computer whiz for quite some time. Oh, so it's awesome. nice to see that 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 carried over into you know this new series. Yeah. And we see more of her. Um, 
And I've also been listening, I've been going back and listening to the old Gallifrey series. Um, and <laughs> it's just really fun to listen to like Linda Bellingham and Lila, Lala Ward, yeah. Mary Tam, the early um, Louise Jameson. You know, it's really nice to hear, you know, these voices from the past um, doing these uh, series. And for people who who maybe can't afford either to buy the classic series um, DVDs um, or subscribe to um, streaming services that show the classic series. There is a free service called Tubi, T-U-B-I. Um, and they've got all the classic, Doctor, at least as far as I can see, they've got all the classic Doctor Who on there. So anybody listening who is, you know, budget challenged, um, load Tubi to whatever streaming platform you have, um, and you'll get to see all the um, all the classic Doctor Who. Um, and and I, found, I found another service that dropped off of uh, one of the services uh, when it moved over to Tubi, but it also popped up onto uh, the free side of Plex. Plex? Plex. Plex with a P? P-L-E-X, yes, Plex.com. Uh, well, I oh, haven't Plex. heard of Plex. Plex. Yeah, uh, Plex is mainly used as a way that people uh, watch and share their uh, video libraries from like uh, their servers. Uh, okay. they, they, but they also have movies and shows like Tubi. Okay. Uh, but Tubi is great. Tubi's got a lot oh, of yeah. current stuff. Um, you know, and that's what hooked me was uh, there's a lot of uh, movies and TV shows and everything that are that really are very current. And so then when I saw the Doctor Who stuff popping up, I'd say, oh, this is nice. Um, so, yeah, that's a shout out to there to people who you know might want to take advantage of that. But uh, yeah, that's about all that I've been watching. Cool. Actually, I've been doing mostly reading. I'm still reading um, uh, John Adams, um, which is a fascinating look into America's early history. Yeah. Oh, so, cool. Yeah. yeah. So that's that. I did um, watch on Netflix that uh, wonderful series that, um, uh, what's his name? Oh, God. Played the president in one of the disaster films. Uh, Morgan Freeman, that's that. Um, oh. He, he um, narrates it's the, the history of, of the Earth, I think. Oh, something like that. Life on Earth. I don't know what it's called. It's on Netflix. Yeah. And anything that Morgan Freeman narrates. Is, yeah, really. <laughs> oh, and he's always, watching, he, he's always got the male version of your school. voice, Mary, the dulcet tones. I mean, you could you could narrate some uh, from some nature um, documentaries of that voice of yours. <laughs> yeah, but uh, I, I, I forgot to say that I've been watching. I've been following along on uh, Portrait Artist yeah. of the Year, which uh, comes up. Uh, I'm on the second to last one that's available, which is 2021. And what's interesting is uh, Chudi Gatwa is one of the sitters. So, uh, but unfortunately, the people painting him, none of them did a very good oh, job. Oh, so. that's interesting. No, no spoilers there, Mary. Eh? Um, yeah, we got uh, the um, Portrait Artists of the Year. We've been watching it here and there. So it's probably up to about episode three at the moment from the current series. <laughs> Yeah, hey, thank you for, uh, for you, you. You get to watch the current one. Yeah, yeah. Good. Thank you for 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 reminding me about Shooty being in other things. I forgot to mention that I finally saw Barbie. Yeah, he's in that. Oh yeah, <laughs> he's it's Barbie, but he's just like a prop to the side. He's yeah. not. Yeah. Oh, it was it was fun though. He's Ken. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um. Oh, by the way, you're talking about other things that would remind me of what I've been watching. I know that Robert would be appalled if I didn't mention the new series of Traitors is on at the moment. Oh, my God, it's just as good as all the previous series. So, that yeah, we're watching that as and when episodes come out. Um, and The Masked Singer uh, has just restarted uh, in the UK. Uh, it, they've made it really hard this year in regards to trying to guess who the singers are. And the new series of Dragon's Den's on. We love those shows. Um, right, and now, earlier on, remember I was saying uh, it was the uh, the feedback from Terry uh, and Linda, uh, and there was a section of it I wanted to comment on. Uh, he says it must have been hot there as their clothing dries out very quickly. Now, I just thought about there was a, somebody else who mentioned that. Was it you, Kirby, or someone said that you know that? Shall we? 
should they perhaps have devoted a whole episode to their clothes drying out uh, before we move on, before we <laughs> move on to the next part of the story? Or should they have just glossed over it and just moved on to the next part of the story? I prefer that they didn't actually linger on the fact that their clothes was wet or anything like that. I, I'd, I'd completely miss that. But nevertheless, I missed it too. So, so uh, yeah, it wasn't me. That happens, um, in a lot, that happens yeah. in a lot of movies and TV shows where the where clothes oh, dry off. Really it, it, it happened uh, in uh, Into the Dalek. Remember, they were all yeah. covered in, in yeah, yeah, right. When they, in, did, when they were in all that gook. You know, they, the they, they nicked the were... idea from um, Back to the Future Two, where um, uh, Marty is wearing his his weird one uh, you no know, suit that when he's in the the um, the fountain and gets out. Your jacket is dry. Uh, yeah. That's what I mean. Yeah. So anyway, uh, next time we'll, we'll be reviewing a show called Listen, so uh, which is quite apt for a, a, a podcast, isn't it? So maybe we can t- kill two birds with one stone just for the time. And we're going to do so that on the reviewing. 14th. Uh, shall I consult my highly busy diary just for you, Kirby? Yes, The please. 14th, uh, apparently so. Okay, excellent. Well, I haven't got... Well, it says 14th, 21st, 28th, 4th, 11th, and that's about it. Um, um, though I haven't got anything scheduled for. Uh, the 18th of February, I've got a show. And then it's a free again until um, a show on the 24th of That's uh, fine. We can uh, discuss those yeah. when we get closer to I mean, I, one week. Where... I feel that uh, even though they're free at the moment, that they could get filled up with stuff that hasn't been scheduled yet. Um, it's like on the, the the weekend of the 4th of May, so May the 4th be with you on that one, um, <laughs> Liverpool Comic Con is on, and Deb has hinted to the prospect, even though Isle of Wight Heroes Con is on that weekend, that we might sort of take a bit of time out and maybe go up to Liverpool, but it's only a maybe at the moment, but it does rather excite me, the opportunity of, of going up, because Liverpool do get really good guests. I've never been to that one before, so... Next time, listen. Uh, so please do listen. And, and uh, Happy New Year. We didn't say that at the beginning, did we? Happy New Year. Hope everybody had a great Christmas. Uh, if you want to sh- tell us all what you got for Christmas, I got Lego. Uh, and I got a, a really good calendar in Portsmouth, though, which is a, a Doctor Who desk uh, day-by-day calendar, which isn't quite day-by-day. Um, when it gets to the weekend, uh, a, a page is devoted to two days. And I've got, I've got it up there. It's got uh, Yvonne Hartman, January the 6th and 7th. Um, so, a yeah, couple of us got COVID for Christmas. You got COVID? Oh, <laughs> yeah, right. uh, I, I didn't. Yeah. But, uh, Fred yeah. did and my wife did. So, yeah, I didn't, uh, I, I didn't really, get, I wasn't really paying much attention. I did got some lovely stuff. Um, but the Lego, I mean, I've got so much Lego, it's coming out of my ear rolls at the moment, uh, which is good because, um, like I say, it gives me stuff to do. Um, when I, and the rare times I've got stuff to do. And I'm hoping to get this show out very quickly so I can have a bath and build the next level of my tower before i go to bed but anyway like i was saying it's listen next week uh, next time because we never know what happens uh, to interrupt the show uh, so thank you for listening watching taking part in the show goodbye goodbye fancy pants bye bye <laughs>
The 20 Megabyte Doctor Who podcast is an APV Services production, sponsored by whoone.co.uk and lavazi.co.uk. We are proud members of the Doctor Who Podcast Alliance. Doctor Who is a trademark of the BBC. No copyright infringement intended. The music on this podcast is covered by limited online music license from PRS for Music.